Andrew McCaw, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's been a while, but I'm delighted to be joined by the Aberdeen assassin, Lee McAllister. Lee, it's been a while, mate. Um, I see you've still got a title around your, your shoulder, so how's things? How's life? I'm not bad, mate. I'm doing not bad at all. Thank you very much. Sorry it's a bit late today. You know, I like busy at the gym, train all the fighters and stuff, but this is the latest belt to the collection. I think it was about nine weeks ago when I won the WBO Intercontinental title, and like I said, this is my 20 years as a professional fighter, so it's nice to be back at rate number 13 by the WBO as well. That's that, that, I said that because when when I saw you, when I heard of you winning that title, I was like, man, Lee was boxing when I was trying to be an amateur ball them days ago. Down, <laughs> you know I mean, I'm like, it's mad, man. You've been, it seems like you've been around forever because what you, you must be in your 38, 39 or something. I'm, I'm 40 in October, man. Well, right, well, you're, you're only a couple of months, jeez, mate. You're a couple of months yeah. younger than me. I was 40 in July, uh, I was 40 last Sunday, in fact, the week of the day. Well, yes, happy birthday, bro. Thanks very I, much. Well, like, this is, as my 20th night year as a fighter, because obviously I've done how much I was 11, so that's my 29 years that I've been fighting for. You still, you, still, you still enjoy it, Lee? I love it, man. I, like I said, I've always been one of them. It's where money doesn't control me. I do because I love it. So mm -hmm. that's where I had a lot of issues with the bigger promoters, bigger things, because they couldn't buy me. Yeah. They couldn't uh, say, oh, by the way, here's 10 guns, going here, hold there, we are missing or whatever. Oh, I'm not inside where else. They can't poke it. Mm. <laughs> it's well, well, listen, well, you love boxing, you love titles. You, what did you say? You got 19 professional titles there. The latest, latest ones there, the WBO, you said you're now ranked uh, with the WBO uh, uh, welterweight, which, I mean, what's the, what's, the, what's the goal for you then going forward? What Are you, are you ambitious to chase more titles? Yeah. Or? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm happy to, like I say, it'd be nice, obviously, to win another belt for end of the year. So I'll be 20 belts, I'll be a belt a year, so it's not bad going. But... Uh, for me, I just talk every day as it comes. If, it, if, if a good offer comes in, I'll talk it. If, mm. if it's a good fight that interests me, I'm not one of these guys who try and chase, oh, I want to fight him, I want to fight him. If someone interests me or somebody rubs him up the wrong way, that's when I get a, a beam up on. That's why I get a buzz out of proving people wrong. But you've done that many a times. I mean, um, we, we will talk about the Danny Williams fight because uh, that was up at heavyweight and a lot of people were probably sceptical that you're taking that fight, but... To, for, to give you people a little clarity on, on your career, you, you've, you've you started your pro career down at lightweight and you've won titles down at there. Uh, it's kind of difficult to think that a lightweight can become a heavyweight and beat something like Danny Williams. So, um, I mean, it's <laughs> it's quite it's quite uh, surreal. It's, I think that's never happened before. I think you're the only person in the, the, the history of boxing that's done that. I am. It's a weird and a, a wacky uh, boxing his history type thing. I'm the first lightweight to win a version of a world title to step up the heavyweight and win a version of the uh, heavyweight titles. It's, it's surreal and crazy because I remember when I first turned pro, I said I'd love to win a Scottish heavyweight title before I hung my gloves up. That would be an amazing feat to do because no one could ever do that, but I'll mm -hmm. do it. And obviously I want one better and we'll win a WBU uh, world title. So it was uh, an interesting camp. I've never had so much in my life. <laughs> it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet 24 7. <laughs> well, listen, the Scottish, the Scottish heavyweight champion, not Nick Campbell, another six foot eight guy who's, who's, who's undefeated, knocked every single uh, one of his opponents out. That wouldn't bother me, man. So, <laughs> likes, of, likes of that thing, so that's Ken. I'm all behind the Scottish fighters, I'm all behind the British fighters. And mm. if they're doing well, they're doing that they've got a deal. They've just got to remember every day is a learning day. You don't get ahead of yourself. You've got to listen to your team room to do the right, the best mm -hmm. thing for yourself, the best thing for your career. Well, let's talk about Danny Williams' fight because a lot of people might not know because Danny Williams has, has fought many times in his career, but a lot of people might not know that you fought Danny Williams. It was for a version of a uh, World Heavyweight title. I think it was a WBU, was it? Or WBF? It was, it was a WBU Heavyweight World title, yes. That's right, yeah. So uh, you won that title and you actually... Stop Danny Williams in in the tenth round now. I know. Obviously, being it's a the, lightweight, being a lightweight, going up to heavyweight. What's the the punch power like? What's the difference? Is it much difference? To be honest, to be honest with you, I was actually really strong. And even after Danny says to me, I did not think he'd be able to hit that hard. That's one of the hardest times I've ever been hit. He goes, like, it shocked me. But I don't know if it was because I was so powerful, or he just didn't expect me to be able to hit at all. He mm. thought he was going to walk through me. But for me, that was a surreal. Thing. It kind of started off a bit of tongue in cheek, and then I, I was like, "Let's go for it." So, 
it was crazy. And everyone thought I was going to get my head punched in. And the more people would doubt it, I was like, oh, well, no, do you know something? I'm doing it. And I ain't, I'm, I'm going to win. And my twins were actually due after the fight in September. I think it was June I fought them. But they were kind of a few months uh, premature. So I, my two babies, basically uh, in incubators, life support and all the rest of it, just being born two weeks before the Danny Williams fight. And everyone said, don't do it. Your head's up there or so whatever. Mm. I was like, no, nah, I just used that as a focus to make sure I was winning the belt for them. So, well, well done to you, man. I mean, it was. When you, to when be I, fair, I, now to be fair, before the fight, I watched him back knocking on Mike Tyson, and my my arse did start flapping a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I, when I finally met him, I walked him. I was like, "Oh shit, maybe a bit of me I can chew." But listen, Danny was a lovely lad, and it was a great day share. I think was such a, a a legend. To be fair, and I'm not going to jump about saying oh, I beat Danny Williams in his prime. Cause he, it probably was the auto. He was coming off a three knockouts in the throat in like the first round and second. I know when I fought him, but the caliber opponent, I wouldn't have thought it went up to be much. But heaven knows I'm crazy. I should have called him the Gypsy King of Scotland. So I'm off my head. Well, I said the Gypsy King of Scotland. Uh, we're talking about that, man. It's like uh, go sticking on the heavyweight sort of scene. Um, I've seen that you're quite uh, your comment on, on Instagram. Uh, to the one and only Thor Bjornsson, the world's strongest man, a six foot eight monster. I think he's like two hundred and seventy plus pounds, or whatever it may be. And I'm, I've got your 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 comment here. Do you mind me reading it out? No, why not? I want to read the comment out. So Thor Bjornsson said, "I'd fight Tyson Fury." And your comment underneath it says, "This guy has lost the plot." Some might say you've lost the plot as well, Lee. But uh, you, you you said this guy has lost the plot. Challenging Tyson Fury is delusional. But I'll say if he wants battered to a pulp by a five foot nine midget, I'm game to get it on. Let's go, champ. Fight time. Uh, are you calling out Thor Bjornsson? Aye. Listen, I'm maybe being funny, right? And maybe disrespectful to him. And of course, a boxer thing deserves the respect they're going to get. But some guy, just because he's a, a weightlifter and strongest man, pumped up a steroids or whatever else, calling out the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Who obviously back in the day actually boxed on my undercards. He's a lovely guy. He's got, his family's lovely. Obviously, he got a lot of the bravado for social media and build up fights and all that. Lovely guys. And for somebody like that, an absolute idiot thinking he can go and naturally last a, a round, two rounds of Tyson Fury is just crazy. He's trying to jump in the bandwagon, make himself 100 million quid to sail for the sunset. So, 100%. I'll tell you what, if you can beat a gypsy, gypsy king of Scotland, and then he can fight the Gypsy King of the heavyweight division. I would easily step up to heavyweight and fight him. Not a problem. Well, he would. He would. Listen, I tell you now, he wouldn't have me with a handful of rice. Mm. Well, that 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 being said, but what I will say, I was in Dubai when he fought Eddie Hall, and um, I mean the guys, the, Danny Williams is a big heavyweight. What was six two, six three? But Thor is. Six eight, six nine. Like I said to you, he's probably 270, 270, 280 pounds, whatever it may be. Man, he's up there. He is massive, mate. Huge. Do you, you said he can't hit you, but can you make a dent in somebody that size? Well, let's get on. I'll give it a go. I don't give a shit. Man, I'm one of these guys. It's embarrassing. And I'm being realistic, right? Look at it, right? I'm a fat old man now. I'm 40 this year, blah, blah, blah. And I know for a fact I would punch his face in. Mm -hmm. So, for him to be calling out a Tyson Fury, is the current WBC World Heavyweight Champion, looking to fight the winner, a Yuzek and Joshua, and other... Ken, hey, guys, he's blowing bubbles. Mm. He must be punch drunk before he's even started. Then is he is coached by Billy Nelson, probably somebody you know and you've met a few times in Billy. So, uh, do you think you could maybe give Billy a call and get this fight on? Listen, Billy's a lovely lad, actually. I've, I've known Billy for a lot of years, and he's a nice kid. So I've got nothing against Billy, and I wouldn't have phoned Billy to try and organise a fight or be anything like that. But I'm sure if I'm doing an interview, they'll, they'll know about it anyway. Mm. Billy knows me well, and he knows I'll fight anybody, and I don't give a shit. So it's not like I'm going anywhere. I'm, I'm here, ready to go anytime. Well, mm. like to him. I'm the, I, listen, I'll tell you something right now. I wouldn't have beat Joshua. I wouldn't have beat Yuzek. I wouldn't have beat Ken Tyson Fury. I'm realistic, and if I would punch his head in that's that, that, mate, it's actually the thing is i'm sitting here thinking man this 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 is outrageous you saying this but like you have fought a heavyweight i know how mental you are the gypsy king of scotland do you know what i mean i know how 
like you said, you said at the start of this interview that I'd fight anybody and you need the challenge, you need this, you need that. It seems like you need this. It seems like you're, you've got the bit between your teeth and you're actually, you're not going to smoke up my arse. You actually mean what you say here. Listen, everyone will tell you over the years, everyone I've worked with, you go speak to Dave Coldwell, Dominic Ingle, likes of these boys, Brendan Ingle, got his soul. They all knew it was fucking crazy. The crazy, the crazy Scotsman, ha, ha, ha. He said, but I bought it. But you didn't know. I'll back up my boss. And I, I'm not going to sit and tell you, oh, this, that. Even, you like, you've got like uh, Johnny Nelson, Junior Ryder, Ryan Rhodes, Isham Pickering, all these boys that's training me for years. They know exactly what I'm like. They know I'm game for anyone. Well, Lee, if you, if obviously Thor has been on the channel a few times, and if he hadn't seen your, your comment on Instagram, uh, and he does somehow, some way, see this interview. Have you got a message for him? Let's go, champ. <laughs> <laughs> that simple. Uh, well, it's what it is, man. Like yeah. I say, I'm not one to get involved in challenging people, but this one actually does. It winds him up. So, again, he needs to go and shop with Tyson Fury and go and fight another muscle man or whatever he needs to do. If he does, I'd be quite happy. If he wants to fight a boxer, and he seems like it's a Jake Paul and all the rest, he's a lot as well. He kind of uh, robs him up the wrong way, but he's fighting, that lad's fighting uh, Rachman Jr. Yeah. next week or whatever it is. You've got to give him credit for showing balls, unless he's paying big money for him to throw himself down. Rachman's going to give him a go. Mm. So you've got to take a half a bit when the dudes start performing, the dudes start stepping up to fight proper professionals. Then you've got, you've got to stand back and say, well, well fair enough. Give well, him credit for credit to you. Yeah, the thing with Thor and Tyson, it's probably a little bit of tongue in cheek and stuff. But if they if they do mean it, they do mean it. But it seems that I'm hoping it is more tongue in cheek because obviously Tyson Fury, we all know how good he is and how elite he is in that heavyweight division. Listen, to be fair, you've got to remember Tyson Fury is the king of the wind ups. Eh? Mm. Him and Billy Joe Saunders and all that. Like, can you get a good banter with him? It's not traveling boys like about a bit of banter. Can so can a lot of the stuff probably is banter with him, but it's still just. Even I'm saying Tyson's name, just the Barson. Yeah, yeah. Well, Lee, listen, I know you're, you're absolutely... I, I, you've got to try to believe everything you say because what you've done in the sport is, is ridiculous. You've been an African Intercontinental Champion, I believe, because you've done a lot of charity work out there. You're, you're now oh, holding yeah. a version of WBO Intercontinental title. So it's like, what is next for you? What if you could... The tail end of this year, by December this year, end of this year, where would you like to be in your boxing career? Not a clue, mate. I take day by day, honestly. <laughs> but, but we'll see what this interview does. If I, if I start stirring up some people, so you never know, we'll see. We'll just sit back and have a laugh, mate. Like I say, it's crazy because a lot of people don't see the other side of it. Like, even like one of my WBO title fights aren't even on, like, it's a box rec. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So, I've got 10 fights that aren't on box rec. So, my record's 48 and 3 right now. But on box rec, you look at it, it's only 38 and 3. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's crazy how, it's basically how people can get hurt. I actually did an interview a while ago where I think it was the Czech Republic asked me to come and fight someone that seen it was about boss, asked me to come fight an up and come and land. I think it was like 7 0. It was, like, it was one of that kind of 7 0. This is all they want to take over to fight him, blah, blah, blah. And I said, listen, mate, you do know I was finish that kid's career. Mm -hmm. He said, nah, 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 we came with fancy our chances. And then I sent him a link with my actual fights, some of the fights videos, and my, my box, boxing record. He says, look, mate, I'm not looking to blow smoke off your arse. I'm there with that liberties and empty. If you're looking for a fight, I'll get one of my fighters to come fight him. I'm going to say, the last thing you want is me finish the guy's career before he starts. Mm -hmm. And then I got a message back saying, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we didn't realize you were still active because it wasn't on boxing. Well, that's putting people's lives at risk. Mm -hmm. No, Simple. I definitely I hear you. No, that's it. It's, well, at least, at least you were honest with the guy and you didn't really take liberties. At least you were honest with the guy. So, I know fighters right now with the British Boxing Board of Control who have actually won professional titles and then went and started back with a debut. It's mm. crazy. It is insane, man. But like, listen, you're, you're crazy, to be honest, to call up. I know I am crazy. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't mean endanger my own life. I wouldn't endanger somebody else's. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just about to say that, man. You're crazy because you're confident in your own ability. And you, like, I mean, if you're doing it yourself, then it's like when you watch your, a sibling or your brother or somebody fight, 
you feel more well, nervous for them than you do for yourself when you're in a fight. Well, you know I mean, well, all, all my three brothers uh, were boxers, amateur, obviously, and all the rest of it. All Scottish champions, British champions, whatever. Done. My brother Marty he was a uh, professional Scottish champion, so it's it, it is more nerve wracking mm -hmm. for somebody else. For my fighters, my fighters are fighting. And I'm just like, what? Come on, can you, the buzz you get. Mm. And a lot of time, I get made a buzz for my fighters winning than I do myself, yeah. unless it's a proper challenge and I do piss people off and wind people up. Well, this 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 interview, Connor thought Beyonce might actually wind people up, and you might get some comments in that. So, hey, listen. <laughs> yeah, like I said, yeah, I don't give a shit. Uh -huh. I say it, I mean it, I'll do it. I don't care. Well, I know, man. Listen, if anything, if that fight does come ahead, I don't know if it will, but if it does, I'm going to be ringside, mate. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> bro, bro. Listen, bro, Lee, you bro. have a good evening, man. I know you've just finished training. So, listen, I'll, I'll the best to the family, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, brother. Same likewise to you, man. And listen, keep Thank in touch, you. man, and I'll speak to you soon. Fair, pal. Take care. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, brother. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Center. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.